What I want to cover in this series of videos are the basic laboratory tests that you will see on a regular basis, as well as go over some tips and tricks about interpreting them and writing them in short notation. The one that we will focus on in this video is the CBC, or Complete Blood Count. The CBC measures the level of cell components in your blood, namely the white blood cells, or WBCs, red blood cells, or RBCs, and lastly, platelets. I'm going to abbreviate like this. The white blood cell count can be broken down further into its various separate components if you order a CBC with diff. But that would not be the focus of the video, just know that it exists. The platelet count is pretty self-explanatory, but the measurements for red blood cells is a little bit more complicated. The two most important values that we look at to represent the amount of red blood cells are hemoglobin and hematocrit. So hemoglobin and hematocrit. Hemoglobin represents the amount of hemoglobin molecules in the blood, so amount versus hematocrit, which represents the fraction or volume of whole blood that is occupied by red blood cells. There are a bunch of other measurements, just know that they exist for now. So when you're looking at the results of a CBC, you're really just looking at four values. The WBC, or white blood count, the hemoglobin, the hematocrit, and the platelets. Often, when people jot these down on a piece of paper in short notation, they will write them out like this, in which WBC goes here, hemoglobin goes here, hematocrit goes here, and platelets go here. The normal values of these are listed here for your reference, but know that the normal range can vary depending on your hospital's lab and other variables. Now let's go to the tips and tricks of how to use these values clinically. For the WBC, your main concern if it's high or low. So if it's high or if it's low. If it's high, it suggests a source of infection, malignancy, or possibly a drug effect such as steroids. And this is pretty intuitive. But what's not intuitive is that a low white blood count can also suggest the same causes as a high count, namely infection, malignancy, and drugs. The two additional things that you have to think about for a low white blood count in contrast to a high white blood count are HIV and bone marrow failure. The fact that an infection can cause low counts is definitely counterintuitive, because we would expect the body to generate more WBCs to fight the infection. But a viral infection, for example, can suppress bone marrow production of WBCs, and a bacterial infection can be so overwhelming that it can exhaust the number of WBCs the bodies can produce. Uh, you can remember this by remembering that one of the criteria for sepsis is a WBC under 4. For the hemoglobin and hematocrit values, it's rare that you'll see high values unless there's some type of RBC malignancy, whether or not the patient's using EPO, they're on steroids, or they live at a high altitude. If the hemoglobin and hematocrit values are low, which is much more common, it could suggest some type of nutrient-related anemia, occult or acute bleeding, among other things. The question that always comes up is, at what level of anemia do you start transfusing? The general recommendation is, in a perfectly healthy patient, you don't transfuse unless the hemoglobin is below 7. So if the hemoglobin is below 7, you transfuse. When the hemoglobin is above 10, you don't transfuse. Right? You don't transfuse above 10. In between 7 and 10, it's a case-by-case -case basis. And this is going to be dependent on how sick your patient is, how many comorbid conditions your patient has, and how well his tissues are receiving oxygen. A couple of nice facts to know 
the hematocrit level is generally equal to about three times the hemoglobin level. And for each unit of packed red blood cells that you infuse into a patient, his hematocrit goes up by three and his hemoglobin should go up by one. Neat, right? The last thing we're going to talk about are platelets. And not surprisingly, you want to know if they're high or low. There are types of blood malignancies that can cause increased platelet counts, but you should also know that platelets are an inflammatory marker, which means that they can be increased when there is inflammation. There are many causes for low platelet count that you should be aware of, including congenital deficits, chemotherapy, idiopathic thrombocytopenia, or ITP, DIC, PTP, etc. Now, at what platelet level do you start considering a platelet transfusion? For patients that are actively bleeding or about to undergo an invasive procedure, you want to infuse platelets if their platelet level is below 50,000. However, for perfectly healthy patients, you actually don't have to transfuse them until they get to a platelet level below 5,000. Random piece of knowledge, each unit of platelets that you get is expected to raise the platelet count by 30,000 on average. Now, here are our take-home points. We're running out of time, so I'm not going to read these to you this time, but please pause the video here and take some time to read over these points. Thank you.